unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Raise your hands and let's worship God. I want you to raise your spirit and faith to something you've never believed God for. Tonight, believe God for something impossible. I said, believe God for something impossible. Just raise your hands and just worship God. Somebody speak in other tongues. Tonight is wonderful. Something is going to happen like you've never seen in your life. Something is going to take place like you've never seen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. like never before all my soul tell him bless the Lord bless the Lord oh my
come and thank God for his blood. 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 Thank him for what he did. Thank him for what preserves you. Come on somebody, thank God for what preserves you. somebody you had a dream not far from now and I was laying hands on you imparting something in your spirit start to receive it now now Start to receive it now. I see light. Shine out of your spirit. Introduce you to something of the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about the Holy Spirit in a certain way. Praise God. Tell anybody tonight we're talking about the Holy Ghost. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and you know when you talk about Him, He appears. Praise God. You know when you talk about the Holy Spirit, He appears. Hallelujah. 
Whatever happens during service and after, I'm not responsible. The Holy Spirit is. Get ready for something beautiful tonight. Tonight, some of you are going to meet the Holy Spirit in a way you never imagined. I mean, you, yes, you have the Holy Spirit, you even speak in tongues, yes. But tonight, God is going to introduce you to another place of the Holy Ghost. I know, I know the Holy Spirit, yes, I've been walking with God for 20 years and 30 years. Watch what's going to happen tonight. The Gospel of St. John. The first chapter from the 12th verse. The Gospel of St. John, the, tw- the first chapter, the 12th verse. This is a common scripture known and read by many, but tonight will give more meaning in your life. The Bible says, but as many as received him. How many have received him? The Bible says, but as many as received him, the Bible says, he gave them power to become sons of God, even to them which believe on his name. Which were born not of blood, the Bible says, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man. But the Bible says, but they were born of what? Born of what? God. Somebody say, I'm not born of blood. Nor of the will of flesh. Nor of the will of man. I'm begotten of God. Say, I'm begotten of God. And the Bible says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, this was he of whom I speak. He that cometh after me, the Bible says, is preferred before me, for he was before me. And the next verse says, and of his fullness, the Bible says, we have all received grace for grace. Somebody say amen. Somebody say, of his fullness, we have received grace for grace. Grace upon grace. Somebody say, of his fullness, we have received. Say it again, say, of his fullness, I have received grace for grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I started preaching... I was conscious of what's going to happen today by the end of service. So much as many things are going to be done by the Holy Spirit, I am cognizant of the fact that the things that are going to operate tonight by the working of the Holy Spirit are but only something that many of you ought to have walked into many years ago. And I mean, when I say many, I mean many years ago. Everybody says, I know the Holy Spirit. Everybody speaks and says, no, 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 me, I know the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is this person. The Holy Spirit is that person. The Holy Spirit does this. The Holy Spirit does that. I believe the Holy Spirit does this. And everybody says they know the Holy Spirit. But let me share something very interesting. The Bible says that when a man is born again, the Bible says he becomes a new creature. And the Bible says, and the old is past, and now the new. Hallelujah. He says that all things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. I love that the Bible calls it new creature. It's not just any other man. It's a new creature. That creature can't be defined fully. Before you were born again, you could be identified and defined. By DNA, by blood, by the will of man, by flesh. When you became born again, people stopped defining you. By the will of man. By blood and by flesh. When you became born again, you stopped belonging to the blood to which you're connected to. From your paternal or maternal side. It only means that you don't have their blood flowing in your veins. It only means that even though that blood is there, and probably in the flesh you look like your father, that is of least consequence compared to what you became in the spirit. Somebody say amen. When you became born again, God planned your salvation. The Bible says, of his own will begat he us by the word of truth. When the Bible says, of his own will begat he us with the word of truth. He says that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. In other words, when you become born again, you became another creature. But he wanted to make you a first fruit. 
a better kind. The one of the fruit is a better kind. He wanted to make you a better kind of the creatures. In fact, he had created many things in the world. But when he reached you, he said, I have to make you a bit better. Advanced and improved. Somebody say, man. Somebody say, I'm a kind of the first fruits of these creatures. First fruits means the best of them all. He made you a kind of the best. But the meditations of God before he created this new creature was through the word. He says he begat us with the word of truth. He begat us with the word of truth. He begat us with the word of truth. You know, the fullness of the word of God. It's out of his fullness that he meditates to create you. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. It's out of the fullness of God that he meditates to make you. It's out of the fullness of the revelation of the word that God says, let me make you. Hallelujah. Job 33 verse 4. He says that the spirit of the Lord has made me and the breath of the Almighty has given me life. Now the literal word therefore has made is the very word he uses in Genesis 12 2. When he tells Abraham that I will make thee a great nation, and I shall make thy name great. I'll make thee a great nation, and I shall make thy name great. When we are talking about the Spirit of God making you, the Spirit of God just doesn't make you like, like they make a something simple, like they made posture. Do you understand what I'm saying? The literal definition, and Hebrew word there, sir, it's more of he configured you into an advanced kind of thing. So when the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord has made you, anything that advances you above human nature is the working of the operation of the Holy Spirit on your life. Hallelujah. Tell somebody the anointing makes the difference. Tell them again and say the anointing of the Holy Spirit makes the difference. Now I'm going a bit deeper here. When the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord has made you, it means He has created, He has fashioned and formed you in a certain nature by which everything in this life will pursue and respond to you because of the kind of nature that you hold. The Spirit has made me. You can only go as great as the Spirit has made you. You can only grow as rich as the Spirit has made you. You can only grow as wise as the Spirit has made you. You can only grow as strong as the Spirit has made you. You can only become as influential as the Spirit has made you. You can only function by intellect as the Spirit has made you. You can only go above and ahead. See, all of us, all of us here, even though we might have the same skin color and maybe be seated in the same place, all of us have a different making of the Holy Spirit operating on our lives according to the revelation that we carry about Him. Somebody say Amen. Somebody say Amen. One time, there was a successful man of God I knew. And I was talking with another man of God and were celebrating the success of that man of God. And this man of God was telling me, do you know why this guy's ministry is a success? And I told him, tell me. And he says, it is because he has money in his ministry. Money changes everything. When I looked at this individual, in my spirit I figured that he thinks that he's equal to the man we are talking about, except that for him he doesn't have money. And the delusion in his mind that if he had just about enough money, he would do exactly what the other man of God is doing. The Spirit of the Lord told me, openly in bold letters, he told me how deceived is he. We are all made by the Holy Ghost. We are all made by the Holy Ghost. God knew that you might never be the wisest. There is. He knew you might never be the strongest. By world standards. He knew that you might never be the most beautiful and handsome. By world standards. 
He knew that you might never be the most influential by world standard. And he gave you the Holy Ghost. The reason of the Holy Ghost is to simply tell you that even if you are not the best in what they say you are not. You see, I told people, when you enter salvation, you cease to exist on the life of merit. You start to exist on the life of the blessing of the revelation of the person of the spirit operating on your life. Let me give you an example. Paul, the minister of the new covenant, and I believe no apostle has ministered like Paul in the New Testament dispensation. He tells you himself that his own words, the words that he had, he says he was not in persuasive language. His words were not in the plausible words of men. If you are looking for the best speaker, Paul was not the most articulate. If you are looking for somebody who had the best articulation, if you are looking for literature in a man, you'd have missed the gospel of Jesus Christ when Paul was speaking to you. If you are speaking for a mighty orator that was fervent in spirit and made in words, you would have missed the point of the spirit and the foundation of the New Testament dispensation. But God gets a man who is not able, who doesn't look able like Paul. He says, and my language and my message were not set forth in the persuasive and enticing and plausible words of wisdom. He says, but they were in demonstration of the what? The Holy Spirit. And he says, and the power and approved by the Spirit and the power of God. He says, it operated on me and it stirred in the minds of my own hearers the most holy emotions. And the Bible says, and thus they were persuaded. In other words, men were not persuaded by what Paul spoke. No. Paul spoke simply. But there was something inside there. I don't know who I'm talking to. Paul was speaking like a normal man. Maybe somebody on this ground would speak better than Paul. But while he was speaking, when he says Jesus is Lord, there was a spirit operating on his life. And it would stir in the minds of his hearers the most holy emotions. And he says, and it persuaded men. Paul did not persuade men because he was a good persuader. Paul persuaded men because he had the Holy Ghost operating on his life. When you have that guy, you can't fail an interview. Why? Because your words just don't come as they are. They come with a certain weight. They come with a certain influence. Let me tell you something. No man in this world, however feeble, however funny they may look, is a success without the influence in the other realm. He might not be a believer, but there might be a principle operating in his life. And that principle with which the Spirit of God agrees it's like wisdom. The Bible says that wisdom is the mother of all inventions. Any invention, an innovation in this world is going to come through the spirit. Wisdom. He says, I wisdom, glory, prudence, and I find out knowledge of witty invention. Any invention in the world is the operation of Sophia, which is the wisdom of God. That is whether a man is born again or is not born again. Are you hearing me? No man invents an idea in the spirit. And it has a physical influence to touch thousands of people. Except if that man has had a certain contact with the Holy Ghost. He might not be born again. He might not be speaking in tongues. But boy, something must have settled. That's why the Bible says that he even gives what? Rain to the heathens and food. Sometimes the word food and rain there represents the place where he gets some of his things as God and then he bestows them on those people's lives and their lives are changed. But you're born again. The Bible says you receive the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You receive the Holy Ghost. Because you receive the Holy Spirit, whether you want it or not, there is something operating on your life way bigger than you can imagine. There is something operating on your life way bigger than what men can see. There is something operating on you. Last week, I was standing with Pastor Zach somewhere. And some guy came after the service and said, Thank you for the service. I just won one of the biggest oil deals in East Africa. 
But it's because of the word. There is something I listened to one day. And in my spirit I said, oh, I'm bigger than what people think I am. Now he told me, people can't even believe what I'm becoming. Because I'm so big. Things that are happening in my life are bigger than my age. That is the Holy Ghost. He will set you in places. Your education status can't set you. He will set you in places. Your English can't put you. He will set you in places. Your, your connections can't put you. He'll, all right. He's called the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that there is a spirit in man. And the Bible says that the inspiration of the Lord giveth him what? Understanding. He says, my son, with all I'm getting, get wisdom. But in all I'm getting, he says, get understanding. Why? Because he knows. He knows. He knows that wisdom, understanding, all of these carry the entity by the operation of the Holy Ghost on your life. By the operation of the Holy Spirit on your life. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Many years ago, I was in a taxi and I was going to preach somewhere. And I started to pray. And I told God, prepare me for the service. Anoint me for the service. I'm believing you for the anointing of the service. I prayed in ignorance. Now I repent. There are many things that we do and say because of ignorance. Because we don't know what exactly we carry in the inside. Okay. It looks politically correct when I say God anoint me tonight for service. The working of the Spirit of God. Listen. I want you to listen to this. Is eternal. The working of the Spirit of God. Huh? He does not relate with you according to the progressive experience of what you're going to do today and what you're going to do tomorrow. The Spirit of God doesn't function that way. When the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord has made you, eh, it means He finished everything you need for any ministry you'll ever have on earth. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. When Jesus was on the cross, He said, it is finished. What did it mean? Everything was done. He gave you everything that pertains to life and godliness. He blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. You don't need more now than you needed yesterday. You have now what you need now. You'll have tomorrow what you'll need tomorrow because he finished it. Praise the Lord Jesus. He finished it. The Bible says we have not received of his part. That we should ask for another part. The Bible says of his fullness. We have received grace for grace. Grace upon grace. Do you hear what I'm trying to tell you? So I told God. Anoint me tonight for the service. He told me, stop asking such prayers. Stop praying that way. You're praying the wrong way. And I asked him, what should I do? He told me, meditate. Meditate on what I've done in your life. Don't look at what you want me to do. Because you're living in the past. For me, your tomorrow is my past. I finished it. I don't know who I'm speaking to. Do you know what I did? I sat in that car and started to meditate the working of the Spirit. And I meditated. And I meditated. And I meditated. And I meditated. And I entered that meeting. I'll never forget that day. I opened the Bible. I read three scriptures. The power of God hit that room. I didn't preach that night. I don't know who I'm talking to. The power of God hit that room. I could not preach that night. I sat and waited for 45 minutes to wait to see until the, 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 they cooled down 
so I can preach. And I couldn't. I went home and they called me after about one and a half hours after I reached home. And they told me, Apostle, up to now, people are still slain under the power of the Holy Ghost. Why? Because for that moment, my eyes were awoken to the fact that God doesn't look at me according to what I'm asking him to do. He looks at me at what he has already made for me ready. He says, we are God's workmanship created unto Jesus and to good works. We were created and took good works. Somebody say I was created. And took good works. Give me the amplified. He says, so we are God's own handiwork. His workmanship recreated in Christ Jesus. Born anew. The Bible says that we may do those good works. Which God predestined. Planned beforehand. For us. Taking parts which he prepared ahead of time. That we should walk in them. Living the good life. Somebody say, I was prepared to be successful. Say, I was prepared to be a wise man. I was prepared to function in healing. I was prepared to be rich. I was prepared to be wise. I was prepared to change this world. Can you shout amen? Shout amen. He says, in the last days I shall pour out <laughs> my spirit upon all flesh. For the latter rain shall be greater than the former rain. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to listen closely. When the Bible says that of his fullness you have received, it means every time you're thinking of the Holy Ghost, he's there to show that everything that you need is already available. When you say, I'm going to heal the sick, it's not an option of let us pray that God will heal the sick. No, let us thank him because he must heal the sick. Why? Because he has given you and I all things that pertain to life and godliness. Listen. Everything you are believing God for, the Holy Spirit has already executed. Your relationship with the Holy Ghost begins when you understand that every meditation of your spirit is upon what he's doing and what he has done. Not what he's going to do. Because even if it's a hundred years from now, the Spirit of God already knows what's going to happen. And He has already fulfilled everything. None of the works of the Lord from the beginning. Not that the sufficiencies of us as of to think as of anything of us. He says the sufficiencies of God who has made us able, not will make us when we pray. Not might make us when we fast. No. He has made us able ministers of the covenant. Somebody say, I have the ability to minister the New Testament. I have the ability to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, to cleanse the lepers, to shake this nation, to shake Africa, to shake Europe, to shake Asia, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to pray for you. Now I want you to listen to me. You received of his fullness. Stop praying like you're believing for a breakthrough. You've already broken through. Hallelujah. Raise your hands in the air. Something is about to fall on you. <laughs> Raise your hands in the air. Why do people ask God like things are not yet done? They have not yet understood the Holy Spirit. 
when you understand the Holy Spirit, you will know that everything you need in this world is already given. Tonight, I had a vision this morning. And something happened tonight in the meeting. And at the end of that something, it rained in the vision this morning. And I knew that this was going to confirm what I saw today. And this is what I saw. This morning I was sharing with somebody. I saw the presence of God filling the whole ground where we were. And I could see that from the sides, the Spirit of God started to sweep and sweep and sweep. And I saw men getting anointed for destiny. I saw men's lives changing. I see healing evangelists. Tonight, you're meeting a spirit like you've never seen before. Holy Spirit. There are people here who have desired to move in the miraculous like never before. In the name of Jesus, receive it! Power of the Holy Ghost! Power of the Holy Ghost! Tonight you walk in the fullness of the Spirit. From today, you're never going to walk in the paths. You're walking in the fullness of the Holy Ghost. There are about a hundred and two. I see the number. A hundred and two. There's an apostolic grace on your life. That nations have been waiting for. Wherever you are in the name of Jesus. Be separated. Power. Power. I want you to raise your voice and start to pray. Tell God I need to meet you today Holy Spirit. That I have ever seen you before. I want to see you today like I've never seen you before. When the Spirit takes over your soul, when the Spirit over your soul oh, you will be changed His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul it's what made a difference on Abraham it is what made a difference on David. That same spirit is the one that made a difference on Paul. He's the one that settled on Jesus. If you're a prophet and you know it, raise your hands. Don't worry if you don't. If you're a prophet and you know it, Raise your hands. If you don't know, don't worry. God will find you there. 
Spirit of the Sovereign Lord. Anoint. 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 Wherever they are. If you're a prophet and you know it. There's something falling on your life. Help that woman. Fullness. 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 If you're a prophet, wherever you are, there are people here. You don't you didn't even know. No, ah, some of you even knew, but you feared the office. Wherever you are, the spirit of God separates you. This is what I hear the Spirit of God tell me. There is somebody here. Your ministry begins today. And I know who I'm talking to. And I know who I'm talking to. You're going to go in the world. Power. Power. Nations have been waiting for you. <laughs> You're the one they've been waiting for. Power. Power. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. I need to do about two or three things before we finish service. The Bible says how Jesus wrought special miracles by Paul. That handkerchiefs, shoes, everything that touched him, touching the sick, they were healed. And they that were possessed were freed. If you want to receive something like that, I want you to raise your hands in the air. Start to receive it now. Start to receive it now. Start to receive it now. The sick will touch your clothes and be healed. <laughs> the Holy Ghost has just started. The blind will touch your clothes and be healed. The deaf will touch your clothes and hear. Spirit of Sovereign Lord, anoint that individual. Listen, he's just beginning. Special miracles are happening on your life. Men will think of you and tumors will leave their brains. The Spirit of the Lord has met you. Holy Ghost, take it, woman of God. Take it, take it, take it. Now, listen to something else. Some of you are entering a glory, you're just going to come in the presence of people and the power of God. The power of God will manifest on your life before you even pray. You'll enter buildings. Men will touch your hand. And the power of God will go through them. Something is about to happen. When the Spirit 
is happening tonight is a defining moment for somebody <laughs> people will come near you and they will feel power power somebody here God is opening your eyes of the spirit you're not going to be able to differentiate you're not going to be able to differentiate the physical world and the spiritual world because the spiritual world is going to become so real ratarendo rico sala I feel tumors disappearing now. Tumors are disappearing now. God is still working something. Raise your hands in the air. There's somebody here. You have been struggling financially for many years I mean many years that you got to a point where you even got tired God is going to prove to you by the Holy Spirit that wealth is an anointing and I mean it's an anointing you cannot be poor when you fellowship with the Holy Spirit I see an anointing to make wealth. Poverty spirits are leaving people. Spirits of poverty are leaving people now. You're not going to struggle again financially. For it is God which gives us power to make wealth that He might establish the covenant. That he made with our fathers. That power separates somebody now. I mean now. Ideas are coming to your spirit. Visions are coming to your spirit. God is sending forth people to provide for your vision. Power. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see God opening spiritual ears. Somebody tell the Holy Spirit tonight. I must walk away with a certain experience with you. I must know you like I ought to. Some of you are entering the grace of fullness today. Receive it, dear sister. Receive it. Of his fullness. A body wholly flooded with God himself. your hands up. Listen. Greatness is a seed. And it is planted in every one of us. But many people die. Noble men. Tonight there is an anointing that is going to separate you from noble men. I know who I'm talking to. And the Spirit of God comes where you are. Great 
Greatness. 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 Your name is going to go ahead of you. You're going to be discussed in the least expected places. I know who I'm talking to. The Spirit of God separates you. I see the grace of multiplication on some individuals today. From today, everything you touch, it will multiply. If you're a preacher, prepare for your church. If you're a businessman, oh. if you're a businessman, I want us to worship God. You were all glorious. You were all glorious. My heart was I saw. Tell him you are worthy. Tonight witchcraft is cast. And I mean any form of witchcraft is cast. Any form of witchcraft is cast. I want you to listen to me. I've just seen somebody. You had a dream when your hands were tied. There's another one. You've not had the dream, but you've been feeling like something has tied your hands. And in the physical, there's not much. In fact, everything your hand touches dies. But tonight, 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 thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come on, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Start to meditate on the fact that of His fullness you have received. Of His fullness you have received. There are some people tonight after this meeting today people are not going to believe what is going to happen in your life and I'm sure about that let me tell you something let me tell you why I'm saying it When I, as I think 20 years, I lived a normal Christian life. The things that are happening to some of these people right now, they happen to me too. I lived a normal Christian life. Normal. I went to church like everybody. I loved God like everybody. But one September day, there's something that sat on my life and I knew from that day 
my life was never going to be the same. That thing has healed cancers. It has made crippled men walk. It has opened blind eyes. It has opened deaf ears. It has changed things that are unchangeable. And of my meditations, every day I know that I carry its fullness. Today the Lord told me somebody was walking out with that thing. Something like that. Today. And whoever I'm talking about is receiving it. You might not be a preacher, but wherever you will be, wherever you will be, wherever you will be, you will be exceptional. Some of you don't need a nice job. You just need the Holy Ghost. You don't need a husband. You just need the Holy Ghost. You don't need a prophecy. You don't need a word. You just need the Holy Ghost. And everything will change. Somebody say, I receive it tonight. Say, I receive of the fullness tonight. I want you to take a minute and start to speak the things that are going to happen in your fullness. As though they are already taking place. Don't think lack anymore. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the guarantee of the things that were freely given unto us by God. I see doors opening for some people. I mean doors. Doors. If you're here and certain doors are shut up on you for a long time, I want you to believe tonight that doors open up for you. They open up for you. And I ask you for one thing only. Never approach the Holy Spirit again from lack. Never approach the Holy Spirit again from shortage. Never approach the Holy Spirit again from limitation. Always approach the Holy Ghost from the fullness you have received. Start to heal in the fullness. Start to set this world in the fullness. Go to ministry in the fullness. Do business in the fullness. Enter marriage in the fullness. Serve in the fullness. In the name of Jesus. I still feel there is something God wants to do. Is there anybody here and you have never given your life to Christ? And you want to be born again tonight? Come. Come.
I'm going to pray for the sick. Ask your immediate neighbor, if they are not born again, you send them here. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come hurry. Anybody else coming? Put up your hand if you're coming here. Anybody else? My heart is in. I saw my sea. I want you to repeat these words after me. Anybody else coming? Wow. I want you to repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus. I believe in my heart that you died and rose again. I confess with my mouth that you are the true son of God who shed his blood for me. I want you to say today I receive you in my heart as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. I'll see you next week. I need a few minutes with some of you who can stay. I still feel there is more. We're going to worship God. We're going to worship God.
Worship God. Worship God. Worship God. Worship God. Worship God.
you to us people. Raise your hands in the air. is receiving an impartation of the demonstration of the spirit. There's something for men who tarry. Somebody is receiving something. You're going to start demonstrating power. And I mean demonstration. Jesus, start to touch one by one Holy Spirit, one by one Holy Spirit, there's somebody that's all you needed to start demonstrating power, you were tired of living a normal life. There's somebody here, you've not, you had even started demonstrating, but it's not satisfactory. Start to receive. Start to receive. Start to receive. Start to receive. Atako is coming where you are. It's in such moments where God anoints men. It's in such moments where God anoints men. Start to receive it. He's coming where you are. I don't I won't need to lay hands on you. Believe me. I want me to lay hands on you. I want me to lay hands on you. The Spirit knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. There's somebody around there, you're receiving it on my left. Somebody around there. Power of the Holy Ghost. There's another person around here. There you are. That's it. That's it. That's it. Somebody around here. Power of the Holy Ghost. There's somebody near the lights. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. There are about four people here. Around there. Start to receive it right now. Four of you. Around there. Brother in blue, receive it. About four of you. There's a sister in orange. Receive it right now. Receive it. Receive it. Demonstration of the Spirit. Signs will follow you. I mean signs. Signs. 
demons will look at you and scream. They will scream out. Today I came for somebody. And what must be done will be done. receive this thing, it's available. It's available. If you're sick, touch where it's been. I rebuke bind and I destroy that spirit of infirmity and disease I command it to loose and I decree be healed in the name of Jesus (laughs) raise your hands again I just saw something else I saw fire coming out of some people's lips. And that fire will devour. (laughs) Spirit of God. Open somebody's eyes to see what I'm seeing. Open somebody's eyes. Every time you open your mouth, the fire of the Lord will devour. Your enemies won't withstand you. I see somebody speaking. And while they are speaking, I see nations consumed by that fire. By that fire. Power the house! Power! again. I am telling you as I see. It's the work of the Holy Spirit to confirm. There are people on this ground and the Lord literally is going to hand you. I see. He's handing you like a generation. I don't know if you understand. It's like a generation. It's like the responsibility falling on your hands. It's all you needed. I see you fill stadiums upon stadiums. And as an apostle, 
in my office I release you to call forth in the power of the Holy Ghost I want you to listen to me. Ministry has secondary places. The ministry of of the gospel has secondary places. And the secondary places of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. They give wisdom profitable to direct the man into how to grow things ministry, businesses, marriages, institutions. There are people here who are receiving something. The grace to grow things. The grace to grow things. I mean, even if you entered in a little small business, you can make it multi-million. Even if you enter a small agency, you can make it big. And all I can do is speak. And give it a few days, you will see. Start to receive it right now. Holy Spirit. Bible says you gave Joseph wisdom he was honorable among his brethren he knew how to feed a nation that grace rests on somebody today Some of you, God is going to throw in political circles, administrative circles, and you go with the wisdom they need. You go with the wisdom they need. Let me do one last thing and close service. The Bible says promotions come from neither east nor west. And they come from God in whom there is no shadow of turning within. The promotion on the job is not what precedes your promotion in the spirit. I want you to understand that. Your promotion in the spirit is what precedes your promotion physically. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? I want to pray for people. I feel God is going to elevate in a very short time. (laughs) Father, in the name of Jesus, elevate them beyond their education. Elevate somebody beyond their ability and potential. Let someone testify in a few days from now that you place them in places they had no ability of. Start to receive it. 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 In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a miracle of praise. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 
1-800-242-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at UMA Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.